Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Modest Designs. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on slush casting or roto casting. It's the same process, it just has a couple names. And the way we're going to do that is using the mold that we made in the last video to cast a Batman helmet. There's a bunch of different casting plastics that you can use for this. Uh, my preferred plastic is Smoothcast 65D because it's very impact resistant and it's made specifically for roto casting. But Smoothcast 300 or 320 would work just as fine. This stuff is just a little bit more durable. The purpose of slush casting or roto casting is when you have a helmet mold, and this is a helmet I made a couple of years ago, obviously you want to be able to put that finished helmet on your head. So it needs to be hollow in the middle. So you can't just pour plastic into a mold and let it harden in a block like you would with most molds. You have to ensure that the, that the middle is hollow. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's get started. Before assembling your mold, you want to make sure the silicone jackets are nice and clean. Any small dirt or grime will transfer directly to the finished casting and likely ruin it. Then, assemble your mold shell and insert the mold jackets inside the shell. Make sure that they line up with the registration keys. Once the silicone jackets are inside their respective shells, take time to line up the silicone jackets and the shells accurately. It's important that the silicone jackets meet so the seam line between them almost disappears. This ensures a good casting. Now it's time to mix up some resin. Pour equal amounts of your resin into small disposable cups. This ensures you have the same amount of both materials. Then mix them together into a larger cup. I've also added black dye to this particular casting, as I prefer darker castings to the normal bright white colors of this material. After thoroughly mixing the resin, pour it into your mold. Rotate the mold to make sure all surfaces are evenly coated. The resin hardens rather quickly, so once the mold is uniformly coated, continue quickly rotating the mold to ensure the resin dries evenly. How quickly the resin cures depends on how thick a layer was used and how hot the mold is. It's easy to tell when the resin has hardened by its change in color. Repeat this process until you are happy with the thickness of your helmet. The amount of resin required varies depending on the size of the mold and the desired thickness. This particular helmet required 60 ounces of resin. Resin is self-adhesive, meaning that multiple thin layers will bond to each other to make a single, durable, thick shell. After allowing for proper cure time, in this case one hour, it's time to demold your casting. Remove the secure screws in the outer shell and lift them off the silicone. Gently peel back the silicone jackets from your newly made casting. It's important to go slow here to ensure you don't accidentally damage or rip the silicone. Most molds produce flashing around a casting, which are thin sections of resin that slipped between the jacket seams. These are easily trimmed away and in most cases can even be removed with just your hands. This particular mold also produces a small lip around the perimeter of the helmet, which can be removed with a dremel and a bit of sanding. So, here's the casting that we just pulled out of the mold. As you can see, there's still plenty of work to be done to it before it is a finished helmet, notably trimming away the excess material with a Dremel, doing a little bit of sanding and prep work before it is painted, and then it becomes this, which is a finished version 
of the same helmet. So once it's given enough prep work in TLC, it becomes a wearable piece. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.